So where are we right now with Warhammer 40K? What are you guys playing, and what are you feeling at this potential tail end of 8th edition? I, I have a couple of questions here. I've been a little bit quiet on the 40K front. I've been playing my Tyranids. I've been playing my Grey Knights. But mainly focusing on Kill Team and Blackstone Fortress, because I'm, I'm waiting for that next step in 40K. In terms of models, collaboration, collection, I'm, I'm building up my war chest. I mean, I'm trolling eBay looking to continue acquiring third edition Metal Tyranids to build up this massive, massive Apocalypse classic Tyranid army. But in terms of moving ahead with Chaos, and uh, in terms of moving ahead with my Eldar, I, I really don't know where to go right now. I, I really don't. And one of the things that I'm kind of wondering about, I mean, Necrons also, even though I, I tend to play a more uh, warrior and immortal infantry heavy armory, army, think of like Tomb Kings in space, legions and legions of Necron warriors, uh, there are a couple of other models that I want to purchase. There are a couple of new directions where I want to go, but not if things are going to change. And the challenge here, I'm feeling it because... I'm trying to figure out what's next. So we're getting this psychic awakening, and, and every faction in 40K is going to kind of get this, this new update. Every model is going to be supported. I applaud Games Workshop for doing that. No complaints there in terms of the support and the love in 8th edition. If I have to find something to complain about, I mean, come on. I've always said the only thing better than playing about 40K is complaining about it. It's almost like things are updating too fast and, and too many models being brought in and crossover, and this is a good thing, crossover everywhere. I mean, I can play my Blackstone Fortress stuff in 40K, and, and there's a lot of other crossover between systems and between the different platforms of, of playing 40k i mean truly fully integrated support but it is a little bit overwhelming but i'm wondering about this this teaser of the black crusade baby cakes was nothing cadia nothing primarchs reawakening showing up everywhere on every street corner nothing this is going to be massive with 40k i mean that's what games workshop is rolling out and it's it's piquing my interest because we heard this. This is not going to be Sigmarized, but we heard this with Warhammer Fantasy. We saw this with Warhammer Fantasy. This idea of wrapping up the end times and it shattered the realms, it shattered the universe, and basically invalidated um, the not only the entire game system, but ranges, complete ranges of models. Now... Am I wrong? We've been seeing uh, more, and my, more and more Primaris Marines, more and more tech, more and more support vehicles. I mean, how many variants of Assault Marines do you even really need? And this is coming from an Assault Marine player. This is coming from a combat, close combat heavy player on there. I love Assault Marines. I love Assault units in, in my Black Templar army. But pushing this out, you know, I've been saying for a long time that Primaris is going to replace regular Marines. And there are, you know, on the one hand, Games Workshop has been very, very careful not to obliterate and alienate models from people's collections. Um, even when there's been tweaks, you know, some of the older obliterators uh, from Chaos from years ago, when obliterators were really, really tiny, now they're big. Well, you still could use your old oblits. I, I traded them a long time ago. Kind of wish I kept them, just for that Dark Mechanicus-type feel on there, or some interesting Servitor um, crossover. The new Obliterators are certainly better. Cryptex, there are, there are a few other models here and there. Excuse me, Pariahs. Uh, my Pariahs are now proxied for Cryptex on there. So they, they've changed model lines, but they've never just with the exception of squats, squatted out entire things. And and I feel like some of the older model ranges that they still support that need to be updated or the fail cast models that they'd like to get rid of, this is a chance to wipe everything clean. They've also said that they're going to ex 
advance the storyline incredibly. Now, this is kind of interesting because um, if you guys have been following my podcasts, I love playing Battletech. I love Battletech also. And from the Battletech narrative, uh, if you're not familiar with it without kind of getting off target here, the idea of Battletech is it, it started around the same time as Rogue Trader, around the same time as, as 40K. Timeline is close enough. And literally over real time over the years, the storyline has been continually advancing. So you can play at the start of the storyline, um, much like Warhammer 30K. You could play the Inner Sphere Succession Era. Then there's the Invasion of the Clans. Then there's the Jihad. Then there's the Dark Age. There's, there's all these different eras to play in that you can utilize your models in. Now, naturally, people are going to have favorite aspects of the game, eras that they completely don't like, they don't want to play. But it's interesting because Battletech did it correct in that the timeline advances, so real time over the years, it's giving you a chance to play in it as it's happening. But you can jump around. You can bounce back and forth with your models. You can play wherever you want. And personally for me, uh, I'd say it's about 60%, 70% inner sphere, and the rest is um, the early clan invasions, you know, exploring that narrative. Now in 40K, I think there's some potential here because certainly you can do the 30K thing, but just based on the tech levels and based how things play out, the lost tech and the mechanicus, can you take your 30K stuff and play a 40K game? Can you take your 40K and jump to 30k if they blow up the universe if games workshop blows up the universe as they're promising that's going to invalidate everything i i can't see just by the nature of 40k where it's like hey there's these different eras of 40k you can just take your model collection and play in there unless they do something and this would have to take it another step up and i truly believe I truly believe that Age of Sigmar was a blueprint for where they want 40K to go. Um, on a side note, years and years ago, I mean, we're talking 2007-ish, 2008, when Apocalypse was released. That was, that was groundbreaking, Apocalypse, in 2007. Because here, the codexes were bound by no allies, um, no crossover, very, very restrictive force organization, Often constraints on the force org, you know, going back to obliterators, you could only take one group in your chaos space marine army unless you were iron warriors on there. Then you could kind of fill them out with it. Apocalypse was like points, take whatever you want, do whatever you want, be whatever you want. Just just throw it down. Don't even have to have the same amount as your opponent. I can bring 20,000 points and titans, and you can just have your army of 2,000 points, and, and we're going to play through the stratagems. Balances out the window. Clearly, Games Workshop wanting to sell models, they want you to just play with no restrictions. We didn't quite buy into that with the community because you, you want some balance. You want um, some limitations in a good way in terms of a blueprint on how to move forward. Now, since then, 2007, here we are, you know, 12, 13, 14 years later, and the games of 40K have gotten bigger and bigger and bigger. The units have gotten bigger. We've diversified out where, I mean, you essentially, um, the rules are a little bit lighter compared to the very early Forge World rules for Flyers. Flyers and Titans are now standard in 40K. Super Heavies, standard in 40K. Primarchs, standard in 40K. I mean, truly the stratification, and this is a good thing, right? You want to have amazing models. You want to grow your collection. You want the game to grow. But I feel like it's gotten to the point where in order to be able to bounce around, maybe they got to blow it up, and there's different realms now. You know, maybe the Eye of Terror, uh, terror or some other aspects on there, I don't know, goes back in time, something happens. I mean, I'll leave that up to the, the narrative to evolve, but I just, I'm kind of sitting. I'm kind of waiting. I mean, I'm still enjoying 40K. I'm still evolving my tactics, but I'm building up that war chest and Games Workshop, you're putting out amazing stuff, amazing stuff. I mean, I'm hooked on Blackstone Fortress. We need more, but I, I want to expand my, my 40K armies forward on there, 
but I don't want to purchase models that are going to be invalidated. I don't want to get involved with factions that might change so much where you're going to realign chaos, order, whatever it is, um, you know, like Age of Sigmar, or if you're going to completely blow up the realms on there, what's going to change? And I don't know if it's just grandstanding. I don't know if it's just them um, pushing this out and there's a plan or there's no plan. And certainly Games Workshop is doing more things correctly than incorrectly as of late. But from someone who knew a number of Warhammer fantasy players that were dedicated to it, um, they're, some of them are still playing Games Workshop. Some of them have left Games Workshop. All of them are like, mm, I don't know. There's a lot of parallels here with what's going on and, and how things are winding down. And Games Workshop is alluding to a lot. What do you think on there? And, and this isn't like a conspiracy thing or, you know, Games Workshop is ending the world or going out of business or any of that type of clickbait stuff. I'm just a little curious of that next direction because it is it is around time for a new edition of 40K on there. And look, at least if it goes to 9, if we go to 9th edition 40K, Corn better get some love. Corn better get some berserkers or some new stuff just on that edition number alone. <laughs> 